Hey, welcome to the Smoker Builder Podcast. My name is Frank Cox. I'm known as the Barbecue Pit Engineer and uh, want to talk about how to move heavy things in your shop, building smokers and stuff today. So stay tuned. Hey, welcome back. Uh, I'm excited to bring this episode to you. It's a continuance of our last episode where I was talking about, uh, you know, just uh, positioning your smoker on your trailer, you know, all of that kind of stuff. This ties right into that subject matter because we got to, first of all, not only know where to put it on a trailer, we also have to be able to move it uh, around. And so these smokers can get pretty dang heavy, especially if you're one of those guys that's doing what they tell you to do, which is use heavy material, right? I'm not really a fan of three eighths or heavier on a pit. Um, I don't really think it's necessary, but however, uh, to those that do, keep on going, it's fine, no problem. But what it is, it, what it amounts to is, no matter how heavy the thing is, we still gotta move it, and I can guarantee if it's any size of a pit, bigger than a tiny patio model, it's probably a thousand pounds or more, right? And I can't lift that, so, um, matter of fact, it's not only that I can't lift it, I can't lift it safely unless I have a mechanized way to do it. So let's talk about how to move these kind of things. And I'm gonna divide it up into two classes. We're gonna call it heavy and then very heavy, okay? So those are the, those are the scientific divisions of things we have to lift, right? Keep it real simple. So anyway, on the heavy class, we're talking about usually a guy is building this. It's like a 250 gallon or smaller, let's call it. And uh, you know, you're, you're having to move this thing around in your shop, you're having to get it up off the ground. And then at some point, you're gonna have to lift it up in the air and put it on a stand, on a sled, on a trailer, something like that. Even if it's just the tank by itself, you still gotta lift it up. And one of the limitations that we run into is not just the weight, it's the height that we have to lift it from or to rather so so having to lift this thing up i don't know 21 inches off the ground okay to the bottom of the cooker that's a pretty standard height for a 3500 or you know single axle uh trailer you know smaller trailer about 21 inches up off in the ground if you use spring hangers and a and um you know like a uh uh, two by four tubing, let's say, or four inch channel. So that means that the top of this thing is going to be at least 30 inches higher up than that. So 21 and 30, that's 50 something inches. Let's just round it up so that we have a region of correction and let's call it 60 inches, right? So having to lift this thing up that high means that we're going to have to have something higher than that or we have to lift it from the bottom, okay? So the best tool in the world, the, the absolute best tool in the world is a forklift. But not everybody has a forklift at home in their two car garage, you know, that's something that we normally don't have. Um, even smaller build shops may not run into that. So how do we lift it otherwise? Well, there's a couple of ways. First off, there are some pretty good size, what we always call cherry pickers or engine hoists or whatever, that you can get pretty darn cheap. And you know, one isn't really enough in this situation, in my opinion. While you can get away with it, you can lift one end up, put it on a stand or something, move to the other end, re rehook, lift it up, and set it on another end over there on something else. You know, while you can do that, um, it it is not really that good to pick and unhook and then move over and then pick again. And you know, because if you got something sitting on a stand you're only gonna be as stable as that stand. Um, I'm thinking in my mind of like the, the baby tank sawhorse things I make out of a channel with a little saddle in it. You know, if you ever seen mine, I've done posts about them. I probably ought to do a set of drawings about them too, but uh, so you can build your own, but they're, they're essentially just a short stand that's got like a saddle in it. And Usually they're about a 12 inch foot on the bottom of each side of that little sawhorse thing. And if you get enough push on something that weighs a thousand pounds, sometimes it's somebody coming in there and leaning on it. You know, that's all it takes. And the whole thing goes topsy-turvy and smooshes over and there's a big loud noise and hopefully nobody got hurt. 
<coughs> and hopefully nothing got broke. So that's why I don't like hooking up, moving, setting down, moving to another spot, picking up. So that's why I'm telling you that I prefer, if it was me, I would buy one and rent one, buy one, borrow one, buy two. If I'm gonna do this more than once, we'll buy two of them, you know? And uh, you can pick each end at that point. And now we don't have a bunch of dangerous maneuvering to do where people can get hurt. Now, if you're gonna be up on a trailer, you gotta lift it up even higher. So what do you do in that scenario? Well, since we don't have a forklift in our home garage or whatever your small shop is, you know, we're, we're, we're not gonna be able to go there. Cherry pickers are limited on height because the boom can only go up so high, right? And another limiting factor of cherry pickers is that, uh, you know, the, the feet, the, the little outrigger feet go up, are intended to go up under a car which has plenty of clearance under it. So sometimes they won't straddle whatever it is that, that you have to uh, get under. So that's a problem. So gantries are the next best solution for that. Um, with a gantry, typically they're adjustable down to seven foot tall if you buy one from like Northern Tool or Harbor Freight or someone like that. It's, it's pretty easy to get a hold of one. You know, they're normally around seven, $800 brand new and um, you know that's that's pretty good uh, cost of entry right there to get one and then uh, you know once you once you uh, get this gantry it's adjustable up to 12 feet tall that's awesome I use mine normally about 10 feet tall but uh, you know I, I tend to need it a little bit taller sometimes but for the most part every build I do this thing works perfect now, another, another good thing about it is, is that you won't need two of them. Two of them are better, but you don't have to have two of them to get a safe pick because now we're picking up from the center of gravity, which is gonna be the balance point or the tipping point on this vessel or this cooker that we're making. So as we build, we just move, uh, move that pick point or the, the, where we're hooking up, we just move that spot here and there. Another really good thing about, about gantries is that we can actually tip the thing in the air, like the, the, the load, which is the smoker. Like if I'm picking at the balance point in the middle, I've got one hook point, let's say, and I'm able to like tilt the, the tank without, without the gantry moving. Um, that's huge. I can rotate the pit in the middle of this gantry. There's enough span there that I can actually rotate it a little bit. If I need to move it 90 degrees or something around so that this gantry can go over my trailer or something like that, you know, there's so much flexibility in the way that you move things. And those gantries, because the load is low and the gantry doesn't necessarily go that high, you know, seven, eight, 10 feet, maybe 12 if you're at max, it's designed for that kind of a load that's less than 2000 pounds typically. Um, for you to be able to move like that. Now, I've lifted some very, very heavy stuff with my gantry in the shop, and uh, I've never, ever had any troubles. You just gotta be kind of smart. Whenever you're setting stuff down, you just gotta kind of really pay attention on uh, what you're setting it down onto from a gantry. Make sure that your, your stands or whatever are, aren't like rocking back and forth. Like make sure they're shimmed to where they don't rick rack or something like that and you'll be fine. Now up in the heavy class, the very heavy class, right? That's the stuff that's like 500 gallon pits, 1000 gallon pits. You know, now we're getting up into that three to 5,000 pound range, potentially, depending on what we're building. I've even built pits that were heavier than that. So um, what you need to do here is you're pretty much, if you don't have a forklift, you're gonna have to have a gantry. Uh, matter of fact, two gantries typically because of the weight so a thousand gallon tank by itself, my gantry will not lift that safely more than like six inches up off the ground. Like it's hard to pull that chain hoist and get that thing up in the air. So what you wind up having to do is put a gantry at each end of your, of your load or your smoker that you're building. And uh, once you, uh, sorry, I'm pulling over here. 
once you uh, put a gantry at each end, now you got two gantries to move around. So that's a little bit of a pain in the rear, but at least you're able to lift something. Like if your gantry is rated for 2000 pounds, you're able to lift up to like safely 1800 pounds per gantry. So, you know, you could probably pull off 4,000 pounds, but it's gonna be a little bit tough. Um, you know, so just kind of be, be sensible about it when you're moving with gantries and stuff like that. A little tiny rock can become like the rock of Gibraltar in your floor when you're moving this thing, or a little piece of, uh, with a heavy load on it that is, or a little piece of uh, like steel that like a drop off of something like a piece quarter inch plate can be an unsurmountable mountain to climb. And uh, you know, so kind of make sure your floor is good and swept um, so that you don't wind up jerking up against it something. And then, you know, a forklift is best. Um, I've built pretty much every pit I've ever built. I built with a uh, either a gantry or a forklift. And uh, those forklifts are usually around 3,500 pounds, 4,000 pound capacity. So it's not real typical that you're gonna get into something that you cannot lift, unless you're doing like a fully insulated double quarter wall plate firebox or three eighths or something on a thousand gallon pit. That's that's when it gets a bit heavy. So the, the final thing I wanted to talk about here real quick is just like safety related things, um, you know, that are general to both classes of lifting things. Um, you know, when it when it comes to moving, anything heavy i really couldn't stress more to you about communication and having a buddy with you okay so there's a lot of stuff that can go wrong um in in the wrong in the just you know a situation that you just didn't think about you're just not aware i tell you that's usually when people get hurt is when they're too comfortable and uh take something they always say what you're best at becomes your blind spot well it's also what you're most comfortable with becomes your blind spot right and so if you've been doing this forever and you get comfortable and something, you know, you're not paying as much attention as you would if you were scared, <laughs> then you could get hurt, you know? So you wanna kind of be careful. So tip number one on, on this end of things is have a buddy, have, have another set of eyes, have somebody that while you're pushing, they're watching, or one guy that's got the most experience is watching and guiding and the other guy is doing the push or the lift or the scoot or the, the rotate, you know what I mean? Um, you know, that's that's always a better way to do things is have some at least one set of eyes. Sometimes more eyes than that can get a little bit, you know, chaotic because there's, you know, you've always got somebody there that can't really, like the, the chain of command really isn't like thought out. So someone needs to be in charge of the move, you know, that's that's the other part of it. When you have a buddy there, somebody's gotta be the guy that's calling the shot. You know, not the boss, but you know what I mean? Somebody's gotta be the eyes, the one that says, wait guys, let's stop and think about this. Wait guys, let's, you know, now move, you move a quarter of an inch, that kind of deal. Well, like I'm saying, you only got one meat suit. I heard that somebody say that the other day and uh, that's true, you gotta be careful. So another thing I'll tell you, is that communication goes both ways, not just from the guy, this is the second point by the way, not just from the guy that's the eyes telling the mover where to move, right? You also need to have the mover communicating to the guy that has the eyes what he's gonna do next, okay? That's the most important thing I ever learned, I think, when it comes to moving big heavy crap. When you, before you do it, say it right? I, it, no matter how easy it is or, or whatever, or, or how simple the move is, something like that, <clears throat> just, just communicate. That's the most important thing. Um, you, you'll, you'll, you'll cut so many hospital bills out by just saying, I'm going to lift now. <laughs> I'm going to push now. And if you can follow it by how far I'm going to move this up a quarter of an inch. I'm going to pry up a half of an inch. And then what it does, what, just wait, just pause one second and wait for whoever else is with you working, especially if they can't see you, wait for them to say no or yes, okay, something like that. Like get a, get a report back from them of some kind that says, you know, I'm going to lift this now a quarter of an inch and with my bar 
And then the guy on the other side of the thing says, okay, I'm ready. Okay, you're not gonna get hurt probably, especially if, if you're both waiting and watching to see what happens. And you're taking small bites, small moves, don't get in a hurry. So that's number three, don't get in a hurry. Go slow, take it easy, think about it. You know, watch and play it out in your mind. You don't have to be like obsessive on something really small, but when it comes to doing things that, that you know, you're lifting a 2000 pound load with probably the minimal tools you need to do it with. And you know, you're all doing it on the buddy deal, you know, and the last thing we want is to invite our friends over and then subsequently hurt them. So, <laughs> or get hurt by them. So <laughs> just, uh, that's, that's the big thing right there is don't get in a hurry, talk it out, sip a beer, whatever you're doing. Well, maybe don't you drink beer while you're moving heavy things, but I wouldn't necessarily condone that. But I guess what I'm trying to tell you is, is relax, take it easy, have fun, enjoy the moment. You know, don't get in a hurry. We're no, we don't have to rush to get this thing done. And, uh, you know, overall be safe. So, hey guys, I really appreciate you listening to this podcast episode. I'm really enjoying these things. This will go up tomorrow, I think. Well, you're listening to it, so you won't know that. <laughs> um, anyway, I'm going to get this thing published here, and you're already listening to it, so you know that. And uh, I really appreciate you listening. By the way, if you have any topics or subject matter that you'd like me to cover on this podcast, hop on over to smokerbuilderu.com. It's free to join. It's our private online community full of guys like you that want to build pits and hang out and talk about barbecue. You can't get no better than that, huh? Um, so anyway, head on over there, join up. I don't even know why it's free, but it's free and it's totally worth it. So, um, if you get in there and mix it up with us, you can leave me comments about the podcast. You can tell me subjects that you'd like me to cover. And I'm in there too, hanging out about once a week. I open up the chat and we just go at it every couple of weeks. I do a live zoom call called a Q and a, uh, and we have all kinds of other things we do in there too. So appreciate you. Till next time, keep your smoke thin and blue. This is Frank Cox, the Barbecue Pit Engineer, signing off. Take it easy. <laughs>